Hey folks, welcome back. So by this point in the API Gateway section, we've gone pretty deep on API Gateway. Now what we're going to talk about in this lesson is using API Gateway with private endpoints. So in the DevOps doctrine, let's click on API Gateway Private Endpoints. And what we're talking about is having these private endpoints inside of our VPC. So we can still use API Gateway, but we're securing API Gateway and exposing our REST APIs only to other services and resources within our VPC or those resources connected via Direct Connect to our own data centers. Now, API Gateway private endpoints are made possible by AWS Private Link Interface VPC endpoints. So these endpoints work by creating elastic network interfaces and subnets that we define within our VPC. And those network interfaces then provide access to services running in other VPCs. Now what we're going to walk through the other VPC is going to be our API Gateway VPC. So the best way to get a handle on this is to walk through this. And we'll do that momentarily. Let's look at our diagram and talk about some requirements. So we need a VPC with at least one subnet and DNS resolution enabled. And then we, of course, need a VPC endpoint. And there are some of the specifics, service name, enable private DNS name. We need ingress on port 443 from within our VPC. And then an API in API gateway with endpoint type set to private. And then we'll look at a resource policy. What we're going to do is some whitelisting, which will give access to the API from the VPC endpoint. Now, this is just an overview, but don't worry. We're going to get into great detail on all of these points. Now, a nice thing about this is that AWS provides some templates that we can use and just kind of walk through our little demo here. I'm going to switch tabs. I have CloudFormation up. And again, I'm working with an AWS provided template. So let's take a look at that template before we launch our stack. And basically, we've seen templates like this many, many times. We're just building a VPC with two public subnets, two private subnets, most importantly, an internet gateway, route tables, ACL. So I'll just scroll down through here real quickly. Again, this is pretty standard. There's our VPC, public subnets, private subnets, internet gateway, public route table, public route. So this template is straight out of central casting for a VPC. And then just some outputs. So let's go ahead and launch our stack. Again, we're creating our VPC. And ultimately, we're going to put an endpoint in here and go on from there. I always like to validate here, and then I can just run it. And let's just call our stack private API demo. And we have some options for environment, but let's just leave it as demo. And click next. Next through options, and then create. All right, and there is our stack. I kind of fast forwarded through that. Again, it's a, just a very standard template for creating a VPC and its contents. But one thing we want to look at is outputs. We'll need some of these shortly. So we have our VPC. Now we need a VPC endpoint. Let me switch tabs and go into VPC. And in the left pane, we want endpoints. And we want to create an endpoint. And service category, we want an AWS service. And remember over here, this is what we're looking for with the region inserted. So for me, it's going to be US East 1. There it is. So over here, we just have to insert our region. What we have to do is select our VPC, the one we just created. So let's bounce back over to CloudFormation and check our ID. Go back over to Endpoints. And we need this VPC. That's the one we just created. Now, for subnets, we want the two private subnets. So this one is good. Let's open this one. There's our second private subnet. All right, let's go back over to the diagram. Remember this, enable private DNS name. We want this enabled. So 
we keep this checked. All right, then we have to select a security group. And right now it's on the default security group. We want this one, Private API Demo Endpoint Security Group. So we're good there. And then we can just click Create Endpoint. Now this takes a couple minutes. I'll close that and we can just monitor this status. But when this is done, we have our VPC and we will have our private endpoint. All right, our endpoint is now available. And just for reference, that took about four and a half minutes. So we have our VPC, we have our endpoint. Uh, what's left? We need an API. So I'm going to open another tab and go to API Gateway. And let's just use our old friend, the Pet Store API. So let's click Create API. It's a REST protocol and it's the example API. Now, here's where things differ from our previous looks in API Gateway. Endpoint type. We now have a private endpoint. We're pretty secure. Private APIs are only accessible through VPC endpoints for API Gateway. No problem. We just created it. And let's click Import. All right, and we've seen this numerous times. Here's where it gets just a little bit tricky. We just have to be careful what we're doing. Remember our notes over here. A resource policy giving access to your API from the VPC endpoint. So basically, we need to set the security to allow this communication, and we do that here. Resource policy. So we're controlling access to our API. We have different options here. Blacklist, source VPC, whitelist, AWS account, whitelist. We want source VPC whitelist. And this kind of provides us with a template. First thing we want to do is get rid of this deny. We're doing a whitelist, source VPC whitelist. Action, execute API, invoke. We have some filler in here that we just need to replace. And what that is, is an ARN. ARN colon, AWS colon, Execute API colon. Let's just get rid of the rest of this. We're going to replace all of this. US East 1, that's my region, colon, my account, and finally the ID of our API, which is right up here. And we just want slash asterisk. Let's go ahead and save this. All right, so we're giving access to our API. Who can access it? We have this condition, string equals, that's who can access it. That's the ID for our VPC endpoint. So we're ready to go. Let's save this. All right, so we're good to go there. So we've satisfied all of our requirements. VPC, VPC endpoint, API gateway, and our resource policy. Now we can go ahead and test this. So how do we test this? Well, we try to access our API from within our VPC through this VPC endpoint. So what we're going to do to test this is launch a Lambda function from within our VPC with no public access. So let's go over to CloudFormation and let's click Design Template. Again, this is a nice little AWS provided template just for this purpose. And I'm going to paste it in. And like it says, it's a template to launch a Lambda function to test a private API. I have some parameters, which we'll see in a second. So let me validate and go ahead and launch. Again, we're going to launch the Lambda function from within a private subnet in our VPC. And we're going to communicate to API Gateway and our API through a VPC endpoint. There's no other way this Lambda function, because of where it's at, because of how it is configured, there's no other way it can talk to this API. So let's go ahead and launch next. And let's just call it Lambda Tester. Now we need a private DNS name from our VPC endpoint. And it's kind of helping us with how this is supposed to look. Let's go over to our endpoint, DNS names. Let's just grab this first one. Plug that in. So that's a DNS name of our VPC endpoint. Now we need the endpoint DNS for our API gateway. So let's go back to API gateway. All right, now first of all, let's go ahead and deploy our API. And new stage, and let's do demo and deploy. This is our DNS. So back at our Lambda function creation, we need to plug in that DNS for our API. 
But note, it's saying without path at the end. So let's get rid of slash demo. And then click Next. Next through Options. Let's Acknowledge and Create. And then I'll just refresh so we can keep an eye on our stack creation. All right, creation complete. Now let's remember what we're trying to do. We have a Lambda function within a private subnet within our VPC. And we're trying to access our API via VPC endpoint, all private. Now let's go to Resources. And we can just click this physical ID to get over to our, our Lambda console. All right, we're at our function, Node.js. Remember, it's the pet store. Let's hit test. And we have these key pairs. We don't have to do anything with that. Let's just hit create. All right, so let's click on test. All right, and we've seen this before. So we return some good data. So again, to recap, we created a VPC, private subnets. We created a VPC endpoint within a private subnet. And what we want to do is only allow access to our API through this private endpoint. And we've created a Lambda function in our VPC in our private subnet to test this. And we have been successful. So thank you for joining me in this lesson.